Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are discussing how humans aren't evolving anymore. Not anymore. We stopped. It's, it's done. It's, it's done. It's over with. We have reached peak. Reached peak humanistness. Well, I have. Damn, the I don't words know about aren't the working. rest of you. I, I I know I am. I've I reached think I'm peak evolution. Yes. Uh, the rest of you are still a little bit behind. Well, I don't think that's how evolution works, but we'll talk about it. <laughs> but before we talk about that, let's talk about what we're drinking. We are drinking good. Sasquatch Reserve. From the 903 Brewing Company in Sherman, Sherman Texas. Texas. Sherman. Uh, Sherman, Sherman. This is a, uh, a batch one, and it's a chocolate milk stout. Imperial chocolate milk Imperial stout. Imperial chocolate milk stout. This Oak is, aged. This is also. either going to be... It's fizzing a bit. Oh, God damn it. This is either going to be wonderful or terrible. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, uh, in all fairness, 903 is not... Um, has not done well on the show. Has not done well on the show. In the past. But I've heard uh, good things about this one, so we will find out. Someone told me this was a uh, highly valued trade beer. A highly valued trade beer. I'm just going to lick this can. A uh, little bit of barter in there. Interesting Ooh. thing that I've seen here. So normally, uh, even in the mid to lower grade cans, um, they're shrink wrapped. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this uh, is just like a sticker. In the high grade cans, they're printed on the cans. This, they took a glossy sticker and wrapped it around. You can tell it's hand wrapped because there's, there's some imperfections in where it was wrapped. Yeah. And I could probably peel this up and peel this off and just oh, yeah. reveal a, uh, a can. Yeah. Which, it, yeah, I would think would be problematic for trading because you could easily drink this, get another can, and fake your... Uh, well, it would have to be the same. It would have to be silver with the same... Uh, Gold top with the it seems silver like a tab. lot of work to trade a beer. Also that, yeah. Uh, but if you're trading a piece of junk for, you know, a twenty five dollar yeah. otherwise can, I mean, yeah, you yeah. know, okay, it's a, it's a cool looking can. Yeah, it really. Yeah, is. and the, these two cans cost twenty bucks, so ten dollars a can. Yeah. Okay. And so I would imagine they probably did the stickers because it is such a small batch that it was. Um, Economically unfeasible yeah, to yeah. get them yeah. printed. We, we're feeling rich today with this one. Apparently. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> what's uh, the, what's it, the ABV on this guy? Uh, all of it. Um, <sighs> it I, I think it has all of the alcohol. Um, That's a good question. So while you're looking at that, we are talking about the fact that there are people out there that believe that human evolution has stopped. Yes. There are idiots who believe that human evolution has stopped. I'll start I, there. I, I so so we we kind of got inspired for this video. Yeah. From another video, which I think we should link at the end of this one. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do too. we'll Fine. link a video. We'll link to that video. Um, and even that video, in and of itself, refuted its own clickbaity title. So I don't know that anyone does believe it. Like well, there, there, there are people. I, I, yeah. You got to go into YouTube hell yeah. and find all of them. I, I, I found I, some. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, and 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 there are some interesting arguments. There, yeah, um, Madam so, Mistress. The primary argument that I was able to find um, by people claiming that humans are no longer existing, no is, longer evolving. Uh, <laughs> we are existing. <laughs> I am fairly oh, certain. Okay. so I think, therefore, I am. Yeah. Uh, no longer evolving is that we have essentially tamed our environment to the degree that there are no longer um, selection pressures being exerted on us. Um, you know, so our brains aren't growing like they used to be. We're not, uh, you know, there was a time when we... We developed language. We developed yeah. uh, the use of tools, um, farming, things like that, and and you know, uh, we the, the, it goes it goes back to uh, the basic ideas of, of Charles Darwin's with his idea of natural selection, mm -hmm. and the thought being that the reason why uh, things evolve, organisms evolve is because if you have a physical characteristic or even a mental characteristic mm -hmm. that somehow uh, makes you 
uh, gives you an advantage, mm-hmm. you will survive and you will reproduce. Right. While those with the weaker traits will not have as many children. And over generations and generations, those weaker traits die out and you evolve and the stronger traits uh, uh, survive and are passed on. Yeah. And you end up with uh, evolution. Uh, the, and, and when you're putting this in, 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 uh, in human characteristics, you're talking about, uh, you know, from early primates into Australopithecus and Homo habilis and Homo mm-hmm. erectus, uh, sometimes, sometimes Neanderthals in there, yeah. Cro-Magnon and ultimately, uh, Homo sapiens sapien. Yeah. Um, and they look at the timeline and, and this is the part that I, that I found interesting. They look at the timeline that Homo sapiens have been on the Earth, and they go, "Why hasn't there been another leap forward in right. this time period?" If, if you break down those time period, the estimated time periods for all the other uh, uh, jumps, it would seem there should have been another jump in there. Well, so so here's here's a, a really interesting, I guess, answer to your question. Um, if you look at at many of those species of human. Uh, they were branches, right? Uh, it depends on how you look at it. I, that, that's why I said sometimes uh, uh, Neanderthals in there are, 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 are Cro-Magnon and sometimes it's not. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're seen as branches and sometimes they're seen as direct descendants. Right. Uh, you know, Homo habilis to, to Homo sapien is, is pretty much a straight line accepted by most evolutionists. Uh, whether Cro-Magnon is in there or not, Used to be accepted, and it's not anymore. It's it's, it's a branch. Yeah, well, and, and we can we can uh, pretty much uh, uh, we know from the genetic evidence that Neanderthals were branched because they yes. came back and rebred. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Absolutely. So, um, so we know from 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 that that the, that there are branches. And uh, what were the what was the the human species that was really short uh, compared uh, with the hobbits? Uh, yeah, Florianus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyway, we know all Why these. Why do you remember those names? Yes. Yeah, and we know all these are branch. We know at least those. Yeah, I'll yeah, say, yeah. Are, are branches, yeah. Um, and so knowing those are branches, it makes it really clean to determine when a new species arises, right? Because and, and there's argument over what these factors are, but because of factors, we'll say, yeah, uh, we have come through and stripped off all the branches. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's that's really important to realize here is there isn't there isn't anything clear where scientists can say ah X happened. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. now we have a new species. So part of the reason we don't have a new species is because we haven't decided we have a new species. Yeah, yeah. We could decide today that that millennials and forward are a new species, and at that point we would have a new species. We just didn't want to do that yet. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Uh, well, and and there's all there's talk of um, classifying our current time as a a new geologic era, um, well, and the age of man. Well, even beyond not that. geologic, but but yes, you know, geologic. We're, sorry. But, but 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 I mean, even even beyond that, they talk about this time period as the age of man, because we are we're so affecting everything. So I don't know if this is is directly related to what you're saying. But yes, there is an argument of classifying us now in a new geologic period, really? mm-hmm. and the basis is uh, we are in a geologic period now that can be distinguished from previous ones by the amount of radiation found in rocks due to our nuclear testing. Yeah. Well, I think that I, I, uh, okay. I, I I think that goes back to the age of man. Uh, uh, but well, and that's but, the yeah. argument that they're saying is that the time that we're in now is so drastically different from what we've been calling the age of man. We've made a significant step forward. With the testing of the H-bomb, if that would be If you want to call the... it a step forward, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've a, made a step. A significant <laughs> step in time's direction. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, um, uh, the, I, I think there's a, there is an argument there to be made. I don't agree with it. But I think there's an argument there to be made by the people that say... I can look back and I can't comprehend why there hasn't been a leap forward uh, in, in the time period. I mean, I mean, I mean, Homo sapien appeared appeared before Neanderthal in, in our record, as far as we can tell. Now, that something could show up. And then Neanderthal appeared and died in that time period. Um, it would seem that something should be there. And I saw a... Uh, uh, an evolutionary scientist who, who who lost faith with this, and he kind of jokingly said it, but but he was saying it to, to prove a point. 
if we're still evolving, why don't I have superpowers yet? I mean, but, but, but I mean, you know. Because he's impatient. That's you're, why. You're, Again, but if you look at the way, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be fair here. Right. Uh, I agree. You are impatient with this with this stuff. He is being impatient. Mm-hmm. But you would expect along the uh, along that timeline that, that a change would have happened, and it doesn't seem to have so happened. So name n- name a superpower. Just I pick one. No flight. Flight. I'm just flight. pulling one out. Okay, so so yeah. flight is a superpower. So let's say that humans all. Developed flight. We wouldn't then call that superpower because birds exactly. do it all the that's fucking true. time. It that's would just true. be the thing we but, do. Yeah, because that's the thing. But I, again, he was saying that to he was he was being ridiculous to make a point. Yeah. Okay. And because there has not been a sign. We're taller. Our brains are actually are a little smaller so now. So much faster than we used to be. No, but, but, but yeah, but is that is that evolutionary or is that uh, or is that a you know just just the fact that we're healthier? Well, which I, is, you know, I which, don't know. Well, and that's one of the things um, that people are citing is, yes, we are, um, nutrition is abundant in yeah, a yeah. lot of the world now. Um, and because of that, our bodies have been able to reach new levels of performance that they were never able to. Um, but the abundance of, um, of nutrition is the sort of factor that allows a species to then evolve sure. to new heights. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah I, I want to take us back a little bit to Neanderthal and discuss that yeah. because there, there's something really interesting that's always kind of tickled my brain about this. Um, and maybe with your, you know, vast expertise Don't in biology, it, go ahead. Um, you can you can kind of help us with this. But did you say biologies? Yes, in the okay. biologies, the biology, like the maths. You okay, know. okay. Um, okay. Going with the British pronunciation. Yes, uh, because we're proper. Um, so we, we, we... I think you're thinking bougie, which is totally different than biology. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, that's we're, French. We're anyway. booty. Anyway, um, so we, we have this, this, this idea in the, in the zeitgeist where we have homo sapiens, then off of those split Neanderthals, and, you know, they're two species, right? Yeah. yeah. Here's my problem with that. The, and, and I know it's fuzzy, but the classical definition of a species is something that's drifted far apart enough from what it was that it can't then breed with it again and yeah. create fertile offspring. But we know Europe is populated with the oh, yeah. children yeah. of Neanderthals yeah, and Homo carrying, sapiens. We're definitely carrying Neanderthal DNA. Yeah. So with yeah. that said, it clearly wasn't far enough away that they couldn't produce fertile offspring. So then, was it even a new species then? Yeah. Or was it a race? So, or, you know, I don't know what you want to call it. Subspecies, maybe. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Something. I have taken the hard stance in the past on um, the definition of, of a species is that it can breed within itself if it and produce fertile offspring. And if it cannot breed with this other thing and produce fertile offspring, then it is not a species. And Something that I have since learned is that there are some tracts of biology, uh, some branches of biology that don't quite accept that. Mm -hmm. Um, For instance, there are some plants that we recognize as being different species, uh, oak oak trees. Live oak and coastal live oak. Yeah. Yeah. And so there are a, there's a group of trees that we call oak trees. Yep. They have several different species, but those species can uh, breed within themselves, but they are recognized as different species. Now, there are also other, uh, other, Experts who would say those are not then species, they're subspecies, but there is at least some gray area to that. So I, I do want to clarify that that is not the holy end all and be all end all be all answer. Well, and and so something interesting, and this gets back to the idea of are we evolving? Uh, because I guarantee you, we've gone through this, uh, and I can't cite a, 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 an instance right now, but I promise you, I can find a, a ten with Google in a matter of three yeah. minutes. Um, but so there was an experiment and I'm probably going to chop this up a little bit with E. coli where this guy has been keeping E. coli in the lab for generation, generation Mm -hmm. and, and watching it. 
and there's actually a, a, a strong argument to classify the new E. coli as a new species that we've mm-hmm. watched the species jump because there was a protein. I don't even remember what it is. Mm-hmm. That the original E. coli, it was poisonous to them and they couldn't ingest it. And the new E. coli can now eat it and get energy off of it. And they're like, ah, there's a change. So now it's cross species. And if we can say something as simple as I can eat something new. Yeah. Can we then say something or that's... I'm resistant to a former uh, killer. Killer. And maybe that killer is a virus in our case. Or maybe... It is something like a bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics. Yeah. But if, if, if a species jump is that soft of a thing, mm-hmm. yeah. then haven't we jumped species like a Numerous bunch? Numerous times. Yeah. 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 You know? I, I can see the argument. Or we have a bunch of different subspecies of humans. Um, so I, I actually want to jump back to this argument of human evolution has stopped because I began to wonder... Um, a lot of the arguments that are getting made by people who are saying that uh, human evolution has stopped is that it stopped because it used to be that there was natural selection. Uh-huh. The better you were, the more likely you were to procreate. If you were not fit enough to survive, then you wouldn't procreate. And that because of... Um, safety net programs, modern medicine, um, and our general coddliness of society. The the success of mankind, of of, of Um, humans, yeah. Because of that, people who would not otherwise have been able to procreate are procreating and thereby halting human evolution. Um, And I look at that. They're intervening in the natural selection process. And I think that that is a sugar-coated eugenics argument. Yeah, actually, actually, um, I, I, I was actually gonna gonna say something similar. I wasn't gonna word it exactly like that. I don't know that I'd necessarily exactly agree with that phrasing, but I don't necessarily disagree with the overall intent of what you're saying. Well, I think the tone of I think the tone that at least I've seen in the research that I've done that's been exuded is that uh, human beings would be better off if we were continuing to allow natural selection to happen. Have you seen, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to come around somewhere useful in this, where they have had the second instance of curing someone from AIDS, and the people who wrote the report said that's, that may be a little bit of a pre- preliminary diagnosis because mm-hmm. yeah. it takes years, but the, the second instance of AIDS being cured, have you seen this? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't read anything on it. So, so the basic premise here, uh, and in both cases, they were circumstances. How in depth are you going to go with this? Because I actually want to talk about AIDS and HIV and AIDS in a little bit more depth, as with its respect to human evolution. I, I'm going to be brief, but I'm going to talk about what happened to these people to okay, cause the procedure to work. Um, right. So, in both cases, they had a, 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 a another. Um, yes. Go ahead. Okay. They had an, an, another issue where they required a bone marrow transplant as well as having AIDS. And because of this, the first one was complete accident uh, as far as I remember. Um, but they, they transferred bone marrow across and this person had a mutation that made it where they were resistant to a specific strand of AIDS. There's actually multiple strands of AIDS. Shocker. Uh, because they didn't produce a protein that the AIDS used to grab on to them, to attach to. When they did this bone marrow transplant to treat another condition, uh, the other person started producing those same markers, and their AIDS went into complete remission. They got completely off medication, and now the AIDS is completely undetectable in their bloodstream. Um, this has happened now a second time. To be fair, uh, many people have tried to re- reproduce the first result and have failed for some for known reasons and others for unknown reasons, but they failed. But again, we had another situation where someone required a bone marrow transplant as well as uh, had AIDS and this did the same thing again, intentionally trying to get it to work, and it's worked again. Um, and so the fact that these people have become 
uh, immune may be a strong word, but at the very least resistant to an incurable disease. Yeah. I yeah. mean, okay, you know. Yeah. Um, so where I was going to go with that is, you know, we talk about how um, our environment isn't exerting pressures on us anymore. Um, I don't remember if this number was 50% of women or 50% of people. I think it was 50% of women in South Africa have um, HIV. Um, and that this is a huge... That's not South Africa, is it? It's, it's, okay, I thought that, was, uh, that, that number was from uh, um, North Africa, but okay. This was specific to North Africa. Or sorry, South Africa. Okay. South Africa. Um, so 50% of women in South Africa have HIV. Um, that is a huge environmental pressure because it's killing tons of people. Yeah. Um, it is theoretically, in, it, it's either inhibiting procreation or it's killing off the procreants. Um, I think that would be the word you'd use there. Yeah. The offspring. Okay. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and so this environmental pressure has resulted in a mutation that makes people resistant resistant to, and in some cases, it seems to be immune to uh, contracting HIV, um, which is a huge deal. And I would argue proof that we are still evolving. Now, um, you know, maybe we can say that in the U.S. we don't have a lot of environmental yeah. Yeah. Well, pressures that are being exerted on us. You definitely got different environmental pressures. Mm -hmm. You're not much chance you're getting eaten by a lion most places. Right, right. Um, but what's the joke? Um, what's the fastest animal in the world? An Ethiopian chicken. <laughs> it's terrible. It is terrible. But um, in a place where there is yeah. very little food, the prey become evolved to be faster to outrun their predator and their predator evolves to be faster to then capture their prey. Yeah. Um, and that's an example of what that is. What am I supposed to be looking at here? I'll these, stop what we're doing. Go the, ahead. Uh, go ahead. So the, these are the statistics for South and East African AIDS. Well, regardless of, of, of that, uh, you've got, a, you've got a situation where obviously the, uh, um, so the, the environment, the environmental dangers are changing. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go back and look at where I got those numbers about 50%. I thought that was awfully high. John's pulled it up and it is 6.8% adult HIV prevalence from ages 15 to 49. I thought that was really high. I'll go back and see what those numbers were. Maybe it was 50% are at risk or something like that. Yeah. Well, and it, it shows um, over 50% are on Antiretrovirals, so some kind of yeah. preventive medication. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but anyway, I'll check those numbers and correct them on the video um, and in the post. Okay, we'll do that. Um, so, the argument, I guess, is that 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 while natural selection is not selecting for the same problems, it's still selecting, right? Yeah. Well, I would, you know, talk to incels. Do one I have to? Of, well, one of the big things that incels say is that they are not being chosen to, pr to bang because they are either physically or socially inadequate. They're gentlemen. To, or they're <laughs> perfect gentlemen. Um, but their argument is that they have been dealt a poor genetic hand mm -hmm. and are therefore being shunned by the people that they would be able to procreate with. So naturally, we need the government to get involved. Uh, never mind. Uh, um, you want to hear about that? You can go listen to the show. incel show. Um, and then we have people with um, severe physical handicaps, mm -hmm. uh, people with severe mental handicaps, who, when you look at uh, their likelihood of procreating, is far less than somebody without those physical or mental handicaps. Right, wrong, or indifferent, you look at it, um, those people tend not to be um, making babies. Yeah, I don't know that that's true, but, uh, but, but uh, it's probably less. 
It's probably less. I don't know that I would say um, that they tend not to. Um, I'd want to see some hard numbers on that. Okay. Uh, but 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 I would accept that it's less chance. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you want to talk about this beer? Sure. <clears throat> We're drinking Sasquatch by Nine O Three Brewery in Sherman, Texas. Um, who wants to start this one? You want to take this one? <laughs> Do you want me to? Sure. Okay. I don't like it. Um, I, I, I suspect that, 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 that I'm going to be the low one on this. Uh, it, it's too, it, the alcohol is too forefront for me. Uh, it's, I, I'm, it's, it's actually difficult for me to drink. I, what, I, what I like about it is I, I, like, the, I like the texture of it um, and the flavor. I like the creaminess on it that, that, that you get there with the milk stout. But I'm just not. Uh, I'm not crazy about the. Uh, I'm just not crazy about the all over flavor. Uh, I, I'm disappointed in what I have. I'm, I'm certain I'm going to be the outlier here, but I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go one nine. One nine. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, so I do think it's alcohol forward, and I, I think that is a place that that we can hit it. Um, uh, it is a beer that's meant to be aged, though. So yeah. I would imagine that it's going to be. Uh, up in the the low teens uh, on alcohol, um, in order to to achieve that. Um, all that said, um, besides the alcohol forwardness, I think it does a very good job with everything else. Um, I I think the vanilla works to smooth it out. Uh, I think the the woody notes are there. Um, I think it has a smooth transition without being overly sweet. I don't think it's overly bitter. Um, I, I think they did, they did a great job here. Uh, so I'm going to be going to eight. Two eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it is bitter, but I, 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 I see where you're coming from. Uh, I think it's bitter. Um, and I would even say that, um, maybe the people at 903 don't drink milk because I think they have, Characterize this as a milk stout when maybe it honestly tastes more like a sour milk stout. Um, like it's kind of gone bad. Um, it is very alcohol forward. It's got a a flat, earthy taste and not in a good way that remains on your palate after you swallow it. Don't really care for that. Um, I do taste a, an oaky woodiness yeah, um, yeah, I that, I, that I feel like would be really good if they kind of improved some other notes on it. I don't taste a lot of chocolate to it. Um, I will say the body is what I would expect for a, an imperial stout, um, the carbonation is at, a, is at a level I would expect for an imperial stout. Um, and the color, even. They got those right. Flavor is lacking. And so, I regrettably, because I, damn it, I lost my unicorn. <laughs> um, I really, really, really wanted to like this beer. And I will... I'll say this. I'll probably finish probably finish what I have, um, which is about three ounces. Yeah, not yeah. much. It's not much. I'll probably finish what I have, but I'm I'm not going to pour more because it's just disappointing. And with that, it gets a one point eight from me. Okay, I, I'm I'm really surprised. I thought you would be higher. Uh, I wanted I really to be did. higher. I uh, so bad. I was expecting myself to be way an outlier because th- this just. Re- I don't know. It's uh, the, 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 the there bit- are a hundred. Oh God, I hate to say this. The bitterness just didn't didn't do it for me. Um, there are a dozen better stouts that I've had. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm going to give them credit for the can. Other than that, I, I, I'm, the can's I'm not, fine. not not crazy about it. I'm sure Beer Advocate loved it. Um, they love everything. Yeah. Though. So it, it actually uh, did worse than, than than a lot of other beers that do really well, and it's got so a three point eight. <laughs> <laughs> so. just, just uh, out of a three point, you can't even scale. break a four on beer advocate. You know you're fucking <laughs> oh, up. Oh yeah. lord! Um, so play our game. 
Uh, Anna, lawnmower. you bring this to me, and before we open it, I'm going to be like, man, I'm banging this dude. After I taste it, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to do like this beer, and I'm going to finish the beer. I finish the date. But I'm going home after this. <laughs> but if you finish the beer, then your chances go <laughs> back up again. Hey, there you it go. It is very alcohol. That is true. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, date? Uh, date. Uh, you know, honestly, this is a mix it up beer. I, as as much as we've knocked it, me less than you two, uh, I think we can all agree it's worth giving it a try. I mean. Yeah, uh, I think so. Uh, yeah. So mix it up beer. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. And uh, no, not a lawn more beer. Yeah. So, no. Um, all right, so that that takes care of uh, Sasquatch with the coolest camera. Squ- Sasquatch Reserve, not Sasquatch the regular Reserve. Sasquatch, Sasquatch Reserve. Uh, they should have reserved it a little longer. Um, <laughs> so where are we on the show now, Madam Mistress? Um, we are to point two out of five. Well, let's go. No. Uh, actually, I'm going to completely skip point two unless one of you guys brings it up. But... Um, Largely, I actually want to jump into this idea that in a few hundred years, what, John? I'm just like, now Now the listeners, there's a mystery point two out there. That <laughs> now they have to wonder their whole <laughs> life, what was point two? Maybe that was the one. Anyway, go ahead. It was the one. Yeah. Uh, so there's this theory um, that I believe at first refutes the idea that human evolution has stopped and then I think kind of makes the argument that maybe it hasn't stopped but will. And that's the idea that in a few hundred years, we will all across Earth be cappuccino colored. Um, which I've, I've seen several other phrasings. Yeah, well, just, of, just, the, just the idea of homogeneity where we're all going to be the same. You, you know, and, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because it, it leads into you know, a point I wanted to make about why haven't we split and yeah. made another branch or made a new species. I actually think at this point, with the technological advances we've made um, and the way we've kind of ruled over our own domain, it would be a de-evolution if we ever broke species. Yeah. Be- because we're having way too much sex with each other for our genetics to ever drift that far apart. Yeah. So um, one of the driving factors for a species splitting into two um, is isolation from each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. And Small groups isolated that are, that, that, that are inbreeding and, and, and carrying out. Yeah. We have developed to the point that we're not isolated from each other anymore. Right. Um, now... There are some ways that could uh, could slow down um, our homogenization. Nuclear winter. Well, talk about um, North Korea. North Korea is so isolated from the rest of the world. Closed off society. Um, that they kind of resemble um, Australia. Australia is a key example of a landmass that separated from the rest, um, became grossly isolated. Um, You know, even birds and things were not, by and large, were not capable of traveling far enough to reach other land. They were isolated, and there were a number of species in Australia that diverged from their common ancestors in Asia and Europe and all that. Um, and so I think we could look at North Korea and wonder if they were to manage to remain super isolated, um, much like Australia was at one point, could they split into a different species? Well, and and the big ones I've heard is if we continue along our current trajectory of technology, and we start colonizing the moon or mm-hmm. Mars. Oh, yeah. Or will our... Well, you have a small group that can... Yeah. A small group that has new environmental pressures uh, exerted on it. Well, you know, it, it, it's happened before. There was a, a family, uh, and I've forgotten where it was. It was in the Appalachian Mountains back in the 1800s mm-hmm. that were separated and um, 
over decades oh, and decades. I know which one you're talking and about. They ended the up fed, having, they had a very, fed. well, they had a very blue tinge yeah. to their skin. Yeah. Because they, the, 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 they, they all carried this carriage where the blood veins were close, mm -hmm. and you ended up it with this family that were blue. Tinted their blood brown, which then tinted their skin yeah. blue. Yeah. yeah. It was an interesting. Well, and the veins were close to the skin, so yeah. you saw everything. Uh, so we've seen where this this can happen. Uh, we, we've seen on a larger scale. There's a reason why. Uh, you know, until the uh, the age of exploration, you had, you know, Polynesian people looked one way, European people looked mm -hmm. one way, African people looked one way. It was because they were sh they were shut off and they were they were evolving in different ways. And then we all had orgies together and, and all of a sudden we're, we're undoing it all. That's yeah. Thursdays. Yeah. So that was called assortative mating, which is essentially the tendency for people to... Um, and we even saw this once we started to... Uh, once people of different ancestral groups started to live in the same general geographic area. Yeah, they still... Um, it is the tendency for people to mate with other people from their own ancestral group. Like, likes, like. Exactly. Um, but when... I mean, so for a long time, there were laws against interracial sure. um, uh, marriages and thereby because marriage was largely determined who you were going to procreate with largely, um, once that was no longer illegal, we've seen a huge rise in the amount of interracial procreation. Um, and so we're kind of breaking away, even though it's still largely the case, we're starting to break away from assortative mating, uh, which is resulting in what, uh, what we're calling genetic blending. And it's genetic blending. Um, sorry, I won't rub the table sexually anymore um but uh, only encouragingly yes isn't that the same anyway, depends on what you want to encourage to do <laughs> oh okay um but so we're engaging in more genetic blending which is uh in a way making it so that things like blue eyes yeah are not as common um in the u.s about a hundred years ago, a majority of people actually had blue eyes. And as we started to um, mate with people who were not from our ancestral group, blue eyes are now about one in six. That was the exact opposite of the data that I saw. <laughs> the data I saw said that, that blue eyes were incredibly rare. and They were now, incredibly rare. And, and, and now they're about 30% of the population. Uh, so you're, you're, so I, they were we, incredibly rare thousands of years ago, which okay. when we were talking yeah. was about the time frame that you were talking about, that it was, you know, being used. Okay. So fun fact, um, do you want to know why blue eyes became desirable? Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a theory that it was the paternity test idea. Yeah. That was in the Nordic countries uh, where... Uh, you know, the thought was that if you have blue eyes and your wife has blue eyes, your baby better have blue eyes. Yeah. And if baby comes out with brown eyes, there's a problem. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's a very bad test. It's, it's a bad test because genetic markers can skip, but also because if that test is out there in the zeitgeist, she's just going to sleep with guys with blue eyes. You got to... <laughs> You got to think about it. That and how many people were killed before their kids' eyes changed, you know, because... Yeah. A lot of babies are born with blue eyes, and they change in the first few months. So, uh, yeah. who knows? Who knows? Uh, what do we got next, there, Madam Mistress? Uh, so, there's the Baju people. Um, they have they are a people who, for thousands of years, have lived on houseboats. Uh, they get their food by diving. Um, they tend to spend more than half of their day in the water, and because of this, so on average, humans can hold their breath for about thirty seconds not talking about like Olympic swimmers yeah. or anything like that. Um, it's not uncommon for the Baju people to be able to hold their breath for like 12 minutes at a time, which is crazy. Um, but they have actually evolved over thousands of years, uh, approximately, oh wait, no, that's a different number, um, to have larger spleens. The spleen uh, does things with blood cells and oxygen, and I think it filters the... I don't remember what the spleen does. But it has to do with blood and oxygen. And because of that, they 
don't have to come up for air as often. So I think we can see, again, talking about isolated people. I was so hoping she was going to say that they have web fingers and feet and little flap, flap, flappers. Flippers. Like Waterworld. Yeah, like Waterworld. Um, so another one. Um, approx- first of all, approximately 35% of the world's population is able to um, digest milk as adults. Yeah. Which for a long time we weren't able to do. Um, it was approximately 7,000 years ago that... As, at least as far as we've traced, that there was a mutation that occurred sure. that allowed people to produce lactase, which broke down, um, excuse me, broke down the lactose in milk to be usable um, and happened in Northern Europe. And at this point, um, approximately 95% of people in Northern Europe are able to digest uh, milk as adults, which yeah. is something that we weren't able to do for a very long time. Um, we stopped drinking milk once we stopped growing. Um, you know, once we reached adulthood. That's we... when I stopped drinking it. Well, and, and, and it's funny because this, this trait's a, a lot less prevalent outside of Europe. In fact, yeah. we have a friend who's Asian and her face and hand turns red whenever she drinks milk or alcohol. I didn't know it was milk. And it was alcohol. Oh. Okay. Huh. Um, so anyway, um, we already covered oh, no. HIV. She only turns red for alcohol, but she is highly lactose intolerant as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Um, and then brains are different size. Um, yeah, they've gotten smaller. By about a tennis ball over 20,000 years. Yep. Um, some theories being that as society has developed... We uh, and we began to specialize. Our brain didn't need to be doing as many things um, at one time. We didn't need all of that processing power, which seems reasonable-ish. Well, there's um, a lot of biologists think biologists that believe the size of your brain has very little to do with your capability. So um, there are other arguments that say that we have become more tame as our environment has become more tame. Um, kind of citing what happens to domesticated animals. Um, and then others saying that we are, our brain, we, and specifically in this case our brains, are evolving to become more efficient. Yeah. They don't need to be as large. Uh, the larger they are, the more uh, energy it takes to fuel them, and they're becoming more efficient. And so it's shrinking and takes up less energy, but we're able to do the same amount or by a lot of measurements more with our smaller brains. At least different. Yeah. Yeah, well, and um, another argument that I've heard is that brains are actually not largely used for complex thinking or doing your desk job. It's actually a, a, a pretty modern adaptation of them, that the reason brains evolved to be the way they are and what size correlates to in brains is the amount of muscles you have to move, and it is simply a processing engine to move your body from A to B to find food. And when we stop needing to be as physical with our bodies... You don't have to kill an animal, you just go down to Kroger. Yeah, Yeah. our brain didn't need to be as big anymore. Yeah, I don't have to to kill my meat at Kroger, so that that kind of... Yeah, and we don't have to predict which way the buffalo is going to veer when we're throwing a spear at it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing about it is... um, We have evolved so far at this point, so much, we have dominated our environment. We are at the top of the food chain in almost every location on earth. And we're still evolving. I think that's been made abundantly clear and can be made abundantly clear with a hundred other examples. Um, And that evolutionary biologist or whatever he was who is complaining about not having superpowers, I mean, we are, in theory, just a handful of decades away from some serious genetic engineering where we can potentially direct human evolution, which is a crazy thought. Um, So uh, I think he can 
I, I think he's probably impatient because he's like 85 years old and he knows he's not going to get to see it. But I'm kind that of pissed doesn't about mean that it's too. not coming. I'm kind of pissed about that too. I want all You've my superpowers. You've got a handful of generations to go. I want, I want and all you know the superpowers. What? The more we develop genetic engineering, they might be able to give you another handful of decades to go. Yeah, um, the way things are going, I'm not sure I want to hang around that long. So, because uh, all the kids are going to have superpowers, and you're not fucking kids. All right, so get anyway, off my lawn. Any but any comments, questions, thoughts, or concerns? I thought it was interesting. All I, right, I thought it was an interesting topic, and uh, thank you for researching that. That was pretty cool. So, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this show, you can support us on Patreon by going to patreoncom slash philosophy. Get some super cool swag at teespring.com slash stores slash six pack philosophy search the web or your social media or any other shit like that by searching six pack philosophy <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in we've enjoyed it and we hope you have too cheers 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 six pack philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you if you would like to support us go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like share and subscribe 